Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I get to use this Australian passport finally because I've been traveling everywhere in Europe on this British passport because I'm heading back to Australia for a few weeks at the end of autumn for a wedding and I'm hoping to sneak in a few dives. It will have been about two and a half years since I've dived in Australia when I get there. And I was looking at some of my old footage at the same time of year to remind myself of what I might come across, what fish were around. And I remember this reef trip that we did and oh, it was awesome. Snack up for a bit of a day trip. The forecast is not too bad, 10 to 15 this morning, dropping out 10 knots this afternoon. So hopefully uh, we're gonna get out and our uh, aim for the day is to pick up some nice big red fish, hopefully some largemouth nanny guys from Red Emperor. It's looking like it's gonna be a cracker day, it's nice and glassy in here, ready to get outside. We're at 1770, it's gonna be good fun. Hundred Ks offshore. What even is wind? Being a hundred kilometers offshore, you expect the visibility to be pretty good and it didn't disappoint. The first fish to hit the esky for me was this delicious Maori cod. If you sit coral trout fillets next to a Maori cod fillet, you'll have a very difficult time telling them apart. How good's by our shock placement, Adzi? There were plenty of small red emperor around and Tim, he just, he can sniff out them out. I swear he's just got this nose that finds red fish and of course he found a good one. Beautiful colours, the body is white and red, but come to the surface it just comes out with a beautiful red colour. We'd already decided at the start of this trip to try and focus our attention on other reef species, not just the usual coral trout that copper flogging every time Spiros go to the reef. It was really fishy, and as I was ascending out of this gutter, I looked over the edge and saw a red throat emperor just trying to camouflage himself into the reef. Not camo enough. Not only are red throat emperor visually stunning, they are magnificent on the plate. The sound of the shot must have roused the attention of this mackerel, but not quite enough to come close enough for a shot. So Tim tells me to put the red throat back down in hopes that it'll act as a giant flasher or a lure for this mackerel, and. It certainly did. He's coming back. Go, go. Can you go a bit low? I was stoked to get both these fish in the esky. We'd only planned to do one day's diving, but with conditions like this, glass, no wind, clear water, we thought, let's sleep at the boat ramp and try some inshore stuff because the visibility was great. When I woke up, I was spitting and snorting and hocking this disgusting fluorescent yellow green mucus. I knew I only had maybe one or two deep dives for the day, so the boys let me jump in on the wreck first. As the barracuda parted like a curtain, I could see the telltale angelic wings of the Red Emperor.
As Tim always likes to do when we're in remote areas, he sounds around for hours and finds gold mines like this wonky hole. And I don't know why, but he gave Josh the first dive. With conditions being so ideal, Tim decided to run up the coast and check out some of these inshore spots that rarely get clean. Get that anchor down! Go it off its tits! Why boys? Big black Jew and fingers and largies and reds and every other thing, not reds, barra everywhere. To say Tim was excited is a touch of an understatement. As you can imagine, I threw that anchor in the water pretty damn quickly. I wanted to get a black Jew of my own. As you can see just there, black Jew aren't exactly one of those fish you would call timid or hard to approach, but you would have thought it'd be pretty easy for Josh to go down and shoot one in 10 meters of water, 20 kilo fish, point blank almost. That actually just happened. Luckily for Josh on this occasion, we always dive as a team and try and get everyone a fish before we start taking another for ourselves. You may have noticed when I shot my black Jew that there were half a dozen barramundi swimming around with it. I love to eat barramundi when you crumb them with panko crumbs, put them on a fresh brioche bun, alfalfa sprouts, cheese, koopy mayo. Ooh, damn, they are so good to eat. I had to take one. Oh, 
everyone watching that footage has got me super pumped to dive out of Brisbane in autumn, my favorite time of the year to be diving there. I should probably make a video about why I love diving Brisbane in autumn so much. Comment below if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it actually makes a difference. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.